World at War was Call of Duty's first venture into the Zombies universe, and it's still to this day, without any doubt, the scariest that Zombies has ever been. I mean, even the menu music is creepy. What started off as a secret side project for an after credit scene turned into one of the greatest innovations in the history of the Call of Duty franchise. And it was a lot more subtle back then as well. There's no giant robots, complicated missions or riddles to solve within the levels. The story is mysterious and the maps do a great job at making you feel like you are simply fighting a hopeless battle. Neither the base game nor the first bit of downloadable content had any zombies achievements. They were only added with map packs 2 and 3. And of those, I was only missing achievements from number 2 after completing map pack 3 a couple of years ago. 6 left in total. There were also two secret achievements from the base game, but those can wait for now. World at War is also very well known for its brutal veteran campaign, most notably the outrageous amount of grenades you'll encounter, but I did all of that back in 2009 and won't be covering it in this video. However, if there was enough interest, I could possibly do it again on a new account, even throwing in the other zombies achievements, but for now, I just wanted to get this 100%ed on my main Xbox profile. Now, before I get started, I have a confession to make. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing when it comes to zombies. My time on Call of Duty was always spent tackling the veteran campaigns and then just playing the multiplayer with mates after school, or on weekends, or on school holidays, or you know, just any other point that I was awake really. But luckily, my close friends are more seasoned zombies players and dragged me through the other map pack. For Shino Numa, however, whilst this worked at first, as you'll see, I eventually had to spread my wings and fly solo. The six I needed were for stabbing 10 zombies in a row whilst under the effects of insta-kill, killing a single zombie with a nuke, listening to the hidden radio broadcast, getting kills with three different traps in a single round, reaching wave 15 without being downed, and finally, the hardest of them all, Big Baller, which requires you to score 75,000 points in a single game. And Big Baller was also the only zombies achievement that my friend Ollie had left, so we decided to go for that, and whatever else I could just get along the way or unlock on my own. There's a fair bit of randomness involved with zombies with the weapon and perk spawns and which power-ups drop, but our plan was to hold out under the stairs in this room, and as long as we didn't open the comms room door next to us, then we only had to worry about zombies coming from the front. We also bought the Bettys from the wall to place in a corner and help deal with the dog waves. Only 10 minutes into our first run, I managed to pick up a well-timed insta-kill and stab my way to the 10 consecutive knife kills achievement. We actually got quite lucky with weapons from the mystery crates and ended up with the two wonder guns plus a heavy machine gun each. And on wave 16, thanks to some quick thinking to down these last two zombies, I killed the last crawler with a nuke, unlocking the next achievement. Sadly, there was a bit of a misunderstanding because Ollie thought that the 75,000 points had to be carried at once when in fact it's just the total you've earned during the game, so you are able to spend them. Unfortunately, because of this, he never suggested going out to get the perks, which would have made our lives a lot easier and perhaps we would have been successful in this run, but instead we are eventually overwhelmed on wave 21, our points barely scraping two thirds of the way to the score required, and this was feeling like it was going to be pretty damn hard. I also still had absolutely no idea what I was doing really. I was just following instruction and I didn't have a grasp on the layout of the map or the various perks you could get, but all that was about to change, because after a few failed runs I decided to have a look online to see some strategies, which I did find and we'll get back to later, but more importantly I discovered a zombie calculator showing the amount that spawn per wave, and this was pretty surprising. As you can see, the amount of zombies when playing solo reaches a cap by wave 5, and that's just 24 zombies per round. Whereas, if you add another player, by the time you're on wave 21, you're dealing with over 100 zombies. So once I saw this, it just felt completely pointless to do it any other way other than solo. There were still two other achievements we could get together, which were listening to the secret radio message and killing zombies with traps. There are a couple different types of traps on this map, the flogger, which is the giant spinning spike log, and then an electric trap at the entrance to each of the four huts, which also contain the perks. Before going for the achievement, you need to build up just under 10,000 points or so because you need to unlock each area and then activating the traps also cost points. You'll need less if you're playing with other people though because they can just open the doors for you. After getting the points, we kept the final zombie of the round down to give us some breathing space whilst using the traps. Each new area that is opened will spawn three zombies, so these are easy targets for the traps. The achievement requires you to get kills with three different traps, which I did but it didn't pop on the first attempt, and I think this was because I didn't get them all on the same round. Either way, the next attempt was successful, unlocking some more gamer score, and whilst running around for those I found the old school black phone on the desk in the comms room, 
I have to press X on it a few times whilst looking at it to get the achievement, along with a creepy message and a pretty cool rock song that plays. And then my last two achievements were Soul Survivor for reaching wave 15 without getting downed, and Big Baller for the 75,000 points. With what I planned to do, these achievements would pretty much come together. Ollie and I did go past wave 15 on our attempts, but I always found a way to stupidly get myself downed, sometimes even in the first wave or two, which is pretty impressively bad. But now it was time to actually get half decent at zombies and learn to hold my own. The strategy I chose to follow involved running laps around the area outside the comms room, which groups up the zombies, and then sprinting back inside, turning around, and mowing them all down as they funneled towards me. However, it's not quite that simple because there is a fair amount of setting up that I had to do first, and a bit of luck needed with the weapon mystery box and the perk placements. To start the first couple of rounds, I'd kill the zombies like normal with the pistol. You can maximise points by shooting around five times at the waist and then knifing for the killing blow. I then bought the Arisaka off the wall to get some nice satisfying headshots and saved up again a little bit. Speaking of headshots, check out this 3 for one collateral, probably wouldn't be able to pull that off again anytime soon. And once I had 2200 points I opened up the gate and headed downstairs, picking up the Thompson and used this as my primary gun for a bit. And when I was back up to 1000 points I bought the Bouncing Bettys which gave me 2 to place each round. Now if running the loop outside is part 2 of the method, then this setting up is part 1, and I spent most of it sat near the doctor's quarters gate. Obviously don't open that or zombies will also come behind you, although sometimes you're forced to which I'll touch on shortly. But by standing just behind this window you only need to worry about zombies coming from in front of you and to your left from the window across the room. They also will climb in the window just in front which can sometimes get overwhelming but it's normally just the odd one or two. And whilst doing these early waves I was making sure to place two Bettys whenever I could just behind me, and these not only helped massively with the dog rounds but could also help with the zombies in emergency situations by just running back into them. From here I was spending my points on trying to get optimal weapons from the mystery boxes, being the Wonder Wolf and a machine gun with a large magazine, as well as the two perks that would make my life much easier as well, Speed Cola and Juggernog. Can all this be done without them? Absolutely yes, you could probably just use the Thompson the whole time. But is it worth the stress, especially if you're a bit of a zombies novice like I am? Definitely not. So after each round or two I tried to keep one zombie alive but downed, allowing me to run around with little stress looking for what I needed and repairing windows for some nice easy points. I'm sure I'm not the first person to say this but it would have been nice if there was some sort of counter to show you how many zombies were remaining on each wave. Instead I just had to roughly guess when the zombies were nearly all dead and I would down one with the grenade and pick off the rest. Not knowing if I dealt with all the other zombies did lead to some heart attack moments like this though. The first mystery box always spawns in the main building and if you're lucky you can get everything you need before it moves to a different location. On this run I got the PPSH super early which was great because it's my favourite gun to use here. It's got a big magazine, hardly any recoil and doesn't slow you down like the heavy machine guns. The other gun you should be after is the Wonder Wolf, which can be useful for the dogs but its biggest benefit is clearing out a cluster of zombies that you don't think you'll be able to squeeze past from rounding them up. If you roll the teddy bear from the weapons box it will disappear and respawn in one of the huts in the four corners of the map. You can tell where it's moved to by the light beam shining down from the sky. And this brings me on nicely to the next thing that's really recommended to make this as smooth as possible, the perks. These also randomly spawn in the huts which are located behind locked doors that cost points to open. When opening a new area, three zombies will always spawn, so I just learned to hang back and let them come to me. In an ideal world, only the fishing hut and the storage will need to be open, because opening up the doctor's quarters, like I mentioned, will let zombies come from behind you, and that's obviously very inconvenient if you're trying to use this corner, and the comms room being open will allow zombies to spawn in there and pose more risk to you when you're running the loop outside. Again, is it possible to get the achievement regardless of all of this? Absolutely, but they're little things that could save a lot of frustration in the long run. On this run that I'm showing now I got speed cola from the first hut and then I did open up the doctor's quarters because I knew if I got the juggernaut perk then I wouldn't need to sit in this corner anymore, instead I could comfortably run the loop outside. Even though I didn't have the wonder Wolf yet, there aren't quite enough zombies at these lower waves to cause you problems, although I'm sure it's still possible to get caught out but it was worth the risk in my eyes. The one problem I had though doing that was that I knew this down zombie would set off the betties I'd been placing in this corner, therefore die and start the next wave, so I took one out by luring the zombies from outside in when I opened the doors, but there was still this one just near the door which I knew would be set off, so I dragged the down zombie towards the other side of the map before sprinting to the opposite hut and quickly grabbing the perk, which this time did end up being the juggernaut that I was after. 
From here I started the second part of the strategy, rounding the zombies up by doing a few laps outside. Usually three was enough, I just needed to give them all time to be dragged over here and away from the main building. Then I ran inside, turned around and gunned them all down. Most of the route is walkway, but there is a water section where to avoid being massively slowed down, I just had to jump towards the side. It's easy enough to do, but something that really needs to be remembered because they will catch you in the water. And the zombies run at your walk speed, I believe, so you really only need to use sprint to dart through groups that are coming towards you. But it's pretty nerve-wracking hearing them all right behind you, so I ended up just sprinting most of the time anyway. And if there's still some items you need to grab once you've started doing this, in my case it was the Wonder Wolf. You can just chuck some grenades after you run inside to down some and then run around the map the same as before, before starting the next wave. I had to do this as well when I ran out of the ammo of the PPSH, so I was just going to some weapon crates to find another heavy machine gun. And I also kept placing Bettys between each wave in the usual spot. They did sometimes get thinned out by zombies during the round, so no doubt there is a more optimal area to place them in, but any you can manage to have down for the dog waves is just a big help. And really, that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. But just because it's simple, it doesn't mean that I found it easy. I had a lot of failed attempts. Fails where I stupidly walked out into the unlocked areas and messed up before realising that I could just wait and the zombies would come to me. Fails where I got overwhelmed in the corner despite only being on the low round. And the speed cola massively helps with situations like this because it increases reload speed, making it far easier to deal with zombies coming you from both directions. Quite quickly though, I did start improving from memorising what I should be doing exactly to even just getting better at shooting. In my next attempt, I managed to get the perks and decent guns, starting the circuit training outside. But on the next dog wave, I fumbled massively, dying to the last one. As you can see, I wasn't even halfway to the points needed yet, but it was frustrating because I had done all the setup. A few more brain farts followed that, for example, letting the cluster get too close to me after luring them inside, but nothing came close to the stupidity of what I did next. So I reached the same position again, I had the perks and the guns, unlocking the achievement for reaching wave 15 without being downed along the way, and it should have been smooth sailing from here. But for some unknown reason, whilst rounding them up outside, I decided it was definitely a good time to glance at my computer, and immediately ended up getting stuck on the fence and smacked down from behind. Not my finest moment, and I was very mad at myself, but I stayed strong though and refused to give up even after wiping another time after messing up in the corner, and then even having to restart because I had such bad luck with the random weapons. My next run was good though. I showed parts of it a bit earlier, getting the PPSH early, and even though I had to open the door to the doctor's quarters, like I said, I did so knowing I wouldn't need to sit in the back spot anymore. I reached wave 20 for the first time and was armed with everything I needed for success. There were some heart in the mouth moments weaving through zombies and very close calls getting hit once or twice, Juggernaug saving me big time. I wasn't checking my points but I knew I was getting close and by wave 25 I was feeling the pressure. My shooting was getting sloppy and I even had more near misses across the next few waves. Wave 27 is when it all fell apart though. In a bit of a panic I accidentally lured the zombies too close to the Bettys, setting a few off. And I have no idea what my heart rate was on this dog wave, but it must have been high. You can probably tell from all these whiffed shots. If only the Bettys were still on the ground because they would have dealt with these two. Instead, I was overwhelmed and defeated, but luckily managed to fire off one last shot before dying. I honestly was ready to just go cry in the dark room at this point after wasting another hour on this run. But as the game over screen faded in, up popped the big baller achievement. Just look at that score. It does not get much closer than that. I'm not sure exactly if it was those final two dogs that got me over the score needed, but it was incredibly tight either way. So there we have it, max gamer score and World at War done. You might notice I'm still missing two achievements though, let me quickly explain. These are both in the base game and are worth a whopping zero gamer score each. The achievements are for prestiging once in the multiplayer and prestiging 10 times. I'm pretty sure this game is not active anymore and I really don't feel like boosting for weeks or even months for literally zero gamer score. I've done some big and probably very questionable grinds before, but this, this is too far even for me. For now anyway. So I hope you enjoyed the video and witnessing a zombie novice turn into slightly less of a novice. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.